A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Mm. I don't understand the poor. I don't understand the poor. He does not understand the poor. I don't understand the poor. Thoughts? I really, really liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, really funny. I hope it does well. It got really great reviews and I want people to see it. And I will tell people to go see it over Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> well, yes. I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very funny. I wish I had been in a different headspace when I saw it because I think I was like, had too many Bechdel test feminist things going on oh. in my head at the time when I saw it. So I was like, why are there just two ladies and they hate each other? Hmm? Mm. But that's like, you know, a problem I have in life. With <laughs> everything. Um, yeah. I did like that the ladies sort of helped each other out in the end. Spoiler yeah. alert! Spoiler alert. No um, but, details. No details, but... Well, I will say the, the one thing about the whole thing in general was that the ending was a little unsatisfying. Yeah. You know, it wasn't bad, it just... Well, I thought for the uh, humor of the show and how sharp and funny and witty that I thought I felt the show was, I thought the ending was like a major disappointment because it wasn't shocking or surprising yeah. or exciting at all. Yeah. It was just very expected, which was, I guess, unexpected because I was <laughs> expecting them to have a ending that I didn't see coming, but there then I was like, oh, oh, okay, that's the ending. <laughs> I was disappointed in the ending, but it's a very funny show, and can we talk about the costumes? Oh my god. Listen, all day, I, can't, every I can't day. even remember the last time I saw costumes that I thought were that beautiful. They were beautiful and detailed, and they looked expensive. Yeah, I mean, Drood's costumes were really great, but we never yeah. saw it that close up. Right, and we were sitting quite close yeah. to this, so I was like, oh my god, the detailing on all the costumes was, was beautiful, and I thought, oh, I love them. Yeah, and it's the same kind of, it's the same time period as Drood, so it has so many pieces and so many, even with the women's dresses that you are all sort of one style, there's right. still so many different styles of that dress Yeah. Um, in the show, and obviously um, Jefferson Mays has a bajillion costumes, lots of fun with those. Yeah. Ugh. Great costumes. Great costumes. I like the sets. The set was cool. I and like it. everything that was happening, I liked the framing device. It's not a plot framing device, sort of. Right. It kind of is, but it mostly is just a literal framing device. <laughs> There's a stage on the stage. <laughs> yeah. And the action, most of the action happens on the stage on the stage. <laughs> My ladies always gotta be fighting with each other over <coughs> men! Well, to be fair, the one that we were supposed to like wasn't fighting over him. She didn't know about the other woman, and we're not supposed to like the other woman. And I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that, because you can have a character that you like and a character that you don't like, no matter what gender they are. The cousin... I yeah, no, I were, completely no, no, I understand what you're saying. I just don't agree with it, and I'm trying to decide whether or not I feel like we should argue about it or if I should just drop it. I really didn't get that feeling until the end, and then it was revealed that they weren't fighting. Anyway, they were working together. To free him, and then they share him? Well, I mean, that's the weird part that I sort of wrote off. Because I felt like that was part of the weak ending, you know? Right. They were like, we don't know what to do here. Maybe it's because we don't want to have them fighting over him. We'll do this? Yeah. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which, Which didn't really it didn't work. It didn't really work, but it's difficult when the main character of a show is a man. Which most of them are, because most of them are written by men. Then the all of the other characters are primarily going to be secondary. Even all of the characters that Jefferson Mays played. So they're not going to be as fleshed out. I and I think the problem is that most of the shows that are being produced are being written by men. Yeah. In that regard. 
Jefferson Mays likes to win Tony Awards for playing multiple characters. <laughs> I think it's his Holocaust movie. I thought it was interesting, maybe because he played so many characters, so it makes sense that he is one of the leads, but because he played so many characters, right. he got the last bow, and even though it made sense for like a second, I was like, what? Oh, yeah, sure, right. of course. Yeah, that can be kind of weird sometimes when you're like, wait, what? Uh oh. Yeah, I mean, he was great. I liked all of the different characters that he played. I thought they were very funny. Yeah. Good, good costume changes. Yeah. He was really sweaty a lot of the time. He was very sweaty. Let's talk about our favorite villain from Ghost, the musical, Bryce Pinkham. Do we have le less favorite villains from Ghost? Yeah, the Subway Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bryce Bingham, he's great. I liked his natural hair. Yeah. It looked good. It looked great. He looked good. He, I... He's funny. He's got a lot of funny facial expressions, a lot of, like, weird shit he was doing on his face. That was great. It's true. And because Ghost is the only thing that we had seen him in, I knew that he was the murderer in this. So I thought he was going to be the bad guy. No. But he was the anti-hero protagonist. Um, it's very in right now, you know, these anti-hero protagonists. To the ladies, the two ladies, Lisa O'Hare and Lauren Warsham. Both of them making their Broadway debut. Very exciting. Very exciting. They were both really funny. They were both very funny. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful voices. Yes. Girls. You guys know real belting in this show. It's very classical sounding. English hall. But great. Beautiful soprano. I thought they were good foils for each other. They played... I mean, they didn't really have... They had, like, one actual interaction at the end of the show. Right. Um, but the characters, though one-dimensional, played well off of each other. I was really confused by um, Jane Carr's character uh -huh. because I feel like there was something that got cut that yeah. had her character be more part of the plot, like towards the end or something. Because they set her up, like she sort of like sets up the action of the entire show, I guess. But then... There's like a weird bit at the end where she sort of comes back in for a second, but like, I, I don't know. I thought I thought her character should have had more to do with the plot towards the end of the show, or with like orchestrating everything that was going on, and then that like didn't wasn't what happened. And I yeah. feel like something got cut. I th it seemed like that too. I thought that she seemed at the beginning like she was going to have a bigger role in the whole thing. And actually, when she came on stage, I was very excited. And then I spent a few minutes trying to figure out what I knew her from. Um, and so I didn't even hear, like, her, why she came to visit him. And then I sort of was like, oh, she was a friend of his mother's or something. I don't but even remember. Gilmore Girls. I forget. The ensemble was really great. The ensemble was very strong. Yes. Oh, I loved that tour scene where they yes. were touring, like, the castle or whatever it was. That was hilarious. That was great. I imagine being in that ensemble is a lot of fun. You get to do a lot of silly stuff. I really liked. They had a lot of the, like, like funny setup lines in their in their music that would like set up the situation. Right. Um, Joanna Glushak. She was awesome. She was fantastic. I loved her. She was hilarious. Yeah. She was great. Oh, that dinner scene was pretty funny. And overall, even though it's a show about <laughs> killing people. It had a very sort of light, you know, wicked sense of humor, but pretty light at the same time. And then when that relationship came in, it was pretty darkly wicked, but like still funny. Yeah, it absolutely. It brought a nice edge to, to the whole show about murder. <laughs> um, it was funny. She was great. Her and Jefferson Mays. I would see a show about those two people. Me too. I would see a sequel. That. Sequel. Except yeah. the guy's dead. Jane Creek. Oh, spoiler alert. Well, sorry. They all die. Is that really a spoiler? <laughs> Everybody dies. Love wins. Wait. <laughs> I do not have a clue. I don't know what I'd do without you.
and I thought he was just great. I thought he was like, I don't know. <laughs> okay.